The next part that we're going to talk about is what's called a vertical discontinuity. Vertical discontinuities are the values of x that are restricted from the domain. Okay. This means that vertical discontinuities are the restricted values from the domain. We're going to concentrate on vertical asymptotes and holes. A vertical asymptote is a vertical line that the graph gets closer to where the y values approach positive or negative infinity as the x values get close to that particular value. This means that our y values either go really, really high or drop really, really low. Vertical asymptotes are in the form x equal to some number because it's a vertical line. And they're found by setting your simplified denominator. Remember, denominator is the bottom, equal to 0, and solving. Holes, my apologies, holes occur in a graph when a factor like x minus c, and remember c is just a constant, so if I wanted to I could write x minus some number or x plus a number, is canceled out of the function. You could also hear this called simplified. Both are fine. If you cancel x minus c when simplifying your fraction, then a whole occurs at x equal to c. And you find that by taking x minus c equal to 0, add c to both sides, so x equal to c. Okay, so either way, you're setting something equal to zero. So number two, we need to find the restricted values in domain of our function. We just did this. We take our denominator, set it equal to zero. We find out x is equal to one, x is equal to five. These guys are our restricted values. So now let's write our domain. Still going to do the number line. If you don't need to do the number line, don't. I know that it helps a bunch of people to have the visual, though. Negative infinity is always on the left. Positive infinity is always on the right. And then in order, numerically, 1 and 5. Remember, they are our restricted values, so we cannot be those numbers. Our first interval is negative infinity to 1. And then we need to jump over the 1, so union. Second interval is 1 to 5. Again, another jump. And then 5 to infinity. Again, that is our domain. Now, the simplified version of f of x. Just a quick side note. Remember when you had something like 2 over 6, you would divide top and bottom by 2 and get 1 third? The reason we could do that is because when we have 2 over 6, that's the same as 2 times 3 in the denominator. Twos cancel out, and we get one-third. So looking at our function, we would have x minus 1 all over x minus 1, x minus 5. You can't take out the ones individually because they're grouped 
with the x, but we can take out the x minus 1 in top and bottom, which means that we have 1 all over x minus 5. The x minus 5 has to stay in the denominator. The denominator is mathematical Vegas. What happens in the denominator stays in the denominator. Okay, holes. What did we cancel? We cancel x minus 1. So we canceled x minus 1, set it equal to 0, and we have a hole at x equal to 1. Okay. Now, in this day and age, we have cancel culture. And if someone is being an a-hole, haha, then we cancel them out. So when you need to find a hole, get it, in your rational function, it's what you canceled out. Cancel culture gives you a hole. Now, vertical asymptotes. This is your simplified denominator. Okay. Simplified denominator or what's left. We would have x minus 5 equal to 0. Add 5 to both sides, we get x is equal to 5. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equal to 5. Okay. I should say that holes in our graph, they literally look like somebody took a hole punch to the line. So something like that. Our vertical asymptotes are literally vertical lines. Looks something like that. And we dash them because they are asymptotes. They're not actually part of the points that we would plot for a graph. Next, we have horizontal asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes are horizontal lines. Remember, horizontal lines go left to right, like you're looking at the horizon, that the graph gets closer to, or the x values approach positive or negative infinity as the y values get close to a particular value. Don't worry, we're doing it algebraically now. The next video, we look at picture examples. These guys, since they are a horizontal line, are in the form y equal to some number. Now, with horizontal asymptotes, they're not as nice as our vertical discontinuities. There are more rules attached. And we have to look at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. Okay. So first case, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. So the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Then your horizontal asymptote is immediately y equal to zero. No work to be done because you already did the work in comparing the degrees. If the degree of the numerator is the same, oh, sorry, the same as the degree of the denominator, so the degree of the numerator we could say equals the degree of the denominator. Then your horizontal asymptote is y equal to a over b. Yes, it's another fraction. Where a is the leading coefficient of the numerator, the top, and b is the leading coefficient of the denominator, 
the bottom. Then the third case, the last case. If the degree of the numerator is more than the degree of the denominator, so degree of your numerator is more than the degree of the denominator, there are no horizontal asymptotes. So when you are asked to determine the horizontal asymptote, First thing you are going to do is find the degree of your numerator and find the degree of your denominator. And this is why we cover polynomials first. You need to be able to notice that in this problem, we have standard form polynomials, which means we take the highest exponent to find the degree. The degree of the numerator is one. The degree of the denominator is also one, and here they are equal. Because they are equal, we're going to have a horizontal asymptote of y equal to a over b, where a and b are our leading coefficients. So we have a horizontal asymptote, which I'm gonna call ha, of y equal to the leading coefficient of the numerator is six, leading coefficient of the denominator is five. So we have a horizontal asymptote of y equal to six fifths. Because it is a line, you need the y equals in front. Okay. When we look at our next one, we have g of x equal to this rational function, this fraction. Starting out, we need the degree of the numerator. We need the degree of the denominator. Again, these are both standard form polynomials, so we're gonna take the highest exponent. Up top in the numerator, our degree is one. In the bottom, our denominator degree is two. And this time, the denominator is bigger. When your denominator, your bottom, is bigger, you bottom out. We bottom out at zero. So we have a horizontal asymptote of y equal to zero. Whenever the degree of your denominator is bigger, you automatically have y equal to zero. Okay, all right, last one like this. We need to find the horizontal asymptote if it exists. So we look at the degree of the numerator, another standard form polynomial. In this case, it's three. The degree of the denominator, this time is one. Here, the numerator has the bigger degree. And since the numerator has the bigger degree, we have no horizontal asymptotes. Okay. 